What is going on guys? Welcome to this video. Today we're going to build a screen sharing tool in Python. So let us get right into it. So the basic idea for this project is that we're going to have a client and a server and the client is going to stream its desktop to the server and the server is going to process that image data and display it in a window. That's the basic idea. And for this, we're going to create two Python files. We're going to need a server and a client and I'm going to call those receiver.py and sender.py like that. Now what's important here is that we need to install a library to make this possible. And this library is called Vitstream. And this library is a little bit special, a little bit more special than all the other libraries because it's written by me. It's written by Neural9 and you can check this out on uh, pypi.org. You can see Vitstream uh, currently in the buggy alpha version. So don't rely on it when you build your project, but you can see developed by Thorin Detto from Neural9 and you can see here author Neural9 and you can also check out on GitHub if you're actually interested in the full code because this is not as simple as uh, it seems because it's not just creating a socket and sending data. Uh, it's actually, you know, packing that data and uh, dealing with the binary stream here. So if you're actually interested in how it works, you can check out the GitHub repository. Uh, my GitHub is also in the description. So check out the functionality if you're interested in it. I also have uh, those Python documentations here if you're interested in the functionality. In this video, we're just going to use the library to build this, um, uh, this, this screen sharing client system. All right, so once we have Vitstream installed, we can go ahead and say from Vitstream import streaming server and then import threading as well. And now we can say receiver equals streaming server. And here we can pass a bunch of parameters. So first of all, we need to pass a host, which is a string, which is the IP address, uh, then also a port. And then we can optionally also pass slots and quit key. Now slots basically means how many clients can connect to this streaming server at once. So how many clients can share this, uh, their screen and the streaming server can also see all of those streams at the same time. So we can set this to one so that we can only have one connection. We can set this to 200. But of course, you know, you need to think about the uh, network capabilities and also about the graphics card and so on. So I'm going to leave this to eight for now. And we're going to specify 192.168.017 as the IP address here. Now, very important, whenever you host something, you want to specify your private IP address. You can find this IP address uh, out by going to CMD to the command line and just typing IP config. And then you look at the IP v4 address and you can find this on Linux um, with the command if config. And then uh, I think it's something like inet address or something like that. So this is how you find your local IP address. So whenever you host something, you want to bind it to the local IP address, which is of this format or 10.0.0, or I think 172 point and so on. Uh, those are the private IP address formats. And whenever you connect to something, you want to specify the public IP address. So if I run this streaming server on a website, what I want to do is I want to specify the local IP address for hosting. And I want to specify the public IP address of that particular server in order to connect to it. So this is how it basically works. You cannot just specify the public IP address for hosting or the private IP address for connecting unless, of course, you're in the same network. So in this case, in this video, we're going to make an experiment later on or a demonstration where I'm going to connect with a second laptop to the streaming server. But this is all happening in my Wi-Fi so I can specify the private IP address there. Um, however, we're going to specify 9999 as port. I'm going to ignore the host, uh, the, the slots, and I'm going to also leave the quit key to Q, which basically means this is the key that you press to interrupt the connection. So we're going to leave this to default. Now, then we're going to say T equals threading dot threat and the target function is the receiver dot start server function. We're not calling it, we're referring to it. And then we say T dot start. Now, why are we running this in a thread? We're running this in a thread so that we can, um, stop this all the time. So we're just going to say something and don't consider this best practice. This is just something that works. We're going to say while input is not equal to stop, we're just going to continue. And once it's stopped, this loop is going to break. And since it's going to break, we're going to execute the statement after this. And this is going to be uh, receiver dot stop server. 
So just so we have some option to stop the server, you could also do something like signal handling or events or something, but this is how you stop the server. So the client is also going to be quite simple. We say from vidstream import, and then we can choose the screen share client here. And once we have that, we say sender equals screen share client. And here we need to specify the host and the port as well. Again, this time you specify the host that you want to connect to. In this case, it's going to be the same one, especially right now it's going to be the same one because I'm going to connect to this same computer. Later on, I'm going to connect to another computer, but still in the same network. So this is also not a real life scenario, so to say. If you have this hosted on some server in the internet, you would have to specify the public IP address here. In this case, I'm going to specify the same IP address of this computer here and the same port, obviously. And we can also specify optionally uh, the resolution of the stream. We're going to leave this uh, as default right now. And then we can just say sender dot start stream. This is the very basic way to do this. You could also uh, have a similar construct like here. So we could do actually the same thing here and say, uh, of course, we need to import threading for this. We can say it is just sender dot start stream. And if we type stop, we're going to get sender dot stop stream like that. So this should work in the same way. And we can actually figure out if this works or actually test if it works. So we're going to um, go to the directory. And we should be able to run the server. Actually, let's run the server in PyCharm and run the client in the command line. So we're going to run the receiver here and it's waiting. And here we're going to run the sender.py. And we should be able, yeah, you can see, I mean, maybe it's a little bit laggy right now because I'm recording, but actually we're sending the streaming data here. So I can also, you can see that it's real time sort of when I'm moving the other windows here. So this is a screen sharing. You can also see the IP and uh, I think that's the port, even though I specified another port, but that's actually the stream. And we're now going to check uh, or to, to test if this is also possible with another laptop. So let's go ahead and see if this works with the other laptop that I have here. This is a Linux machine. Uh, I don't think that you're going to see too much here, but you're going to see the screen in a second anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run the receiver here again on the Windows machine. And now I'm going to run the sender.py file on this machine here. And you're going to see that I'm streaming the screen here. You can see it. Um, you can also see that if I do something here, you're also going to see it in sort of real time. It's a little bit laggy, but you can see the screen. And now we can actually also go ahead and connect with the client here as well. So with let's say stop here and then go ahead and do sender py. And now we have two streams here opened up. So we have the Linux machine and we also have the Windows machine, which is a little bit recursive right now because we're streaming, it's, it's streaming itself basically. Uh, but you can see we now have two different windows and here I can just type Q and this stream is gone. And here I can stop it from the client side by saying stop, for example, and I can stop the full server by just saying stop as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.